Today, we're going to be creating this particular sci-fi abstract loop that's supposed to represent some sort of wormhole type effect using nothing but our default cube modifiers and a little bit of texturing. We're going to be using our actual default cube and we're going to go to the modifiers tab, go to the modifiers and add in a subdivision surface. We're going to change from the default to simple and increase the levels all the way to six and six. After that, we're going to add in a simple deform modifier, and most of it is going to be completely based on simple deform modifiers. We're going to switch to stretch, and we're going to change the factor to something like 1.9. So this is just going to stretch it out, and as it stretches, it gets pinched in the middle. So let's go ahead and now twist it. So let's add in another simple deform and keep it on twist and just twist it by maybe 720 degrees so that we get quite a few twists. Now let's just rotate it on the y axis by 90 degrees and also just add another subdivision surface modifier to smooth things out. Make sure that we change the level on the viewport also to 2. Once we have this set up, we can always go to object and shade smooth just to make sure that it's completely smoothed out. Now the next thing is we want this to rotate. So we're going to go to frame number 0 and just add in a keyframe for the rotation. And then we're going to go to the last frame, which is going to be frame 300. So let's make change the end frame to 300. Go to frame 300, rotate it on the z-axis by 360 degrees, and then hit I for the rotation. Make sure that you keep your cursor on the timeline. Hit T linear. So now when we play the animation, we should get the actual rotation. Right now it's going at 24 frames per second, but we want it to go to 30 frames per second. So let's go to the output properties and change it to 30 frames per second. We can also change the output folder to what we want and change the file format to FFmpeg video while we're at it. We can change the encoding to MPEG4 and the output quality to perceptually lossless. Although that generally is the last thing we do, just took care of it right now. Now that we have our animation working fine, let's get to the actual texturing of this. Before that, in our output properties, we should also be changing our resolution to 1080 and 1920 so that it's in the vertical aspect ratio. Then let's take our camera and just Alt G to clear rotation, Alt R to clear rotation, rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees and grab it on the y-axis and just move it back by a little bit. Then hit 0 to go into the camera view and then G Y and just move it till the object fills our camera view. Once we have that done, we can go to the actual texturing. So let's change to the rendered viewport shading and get rid of the default light. After that, we can go ahead and select our object, go to the materials, go down to the settings, and make sure we change the blend mode to alpha clip. And once we have that done, we can go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections. Now we can go ahead and create a new window and open the shader editor, hit N to remove the side panel and start with the actual texturing. So we want a few waves to go around this. So we can just search for a wave texture and go ahead and control shift click with the node wrangler switched on to see what the waves currently look like. And clearly it's not what we want. We want it to go along the lines. So we're going to go ahead and change it from X to Y and it's still not right. So let's change it to Z. And since none of them are giving what we want, we can just control T with the node wrangler switched on to get the texture coordinates and mapping nodes and switch to UV. And now we can switch from X to Y and see what we get. So once we're on the UV coordinates, we can see whichever one you feel is best, but we just want a few lines to go through. So I think Y looks fine. Now we can just add a lot of distortion to this and also add in a color ramp and place the color ramp right after the wave texture so that we can bring in the black and have thinner white lines. So now we can just take all of these and just shift them back and then place this color into the alpha and then control shift click the principal BSDF to see what we have at the moment. So right now we can see that we have the lines. I feel like the rotation is happening in the opposite direction of what I'd like. I'm just going to go to frame number 150 and then hit S minus one to flip the keyframes around and that should reverse the direction of rotation. Now the thing is that we want the color of these lines to go into the emission of the principal BSDF. So we actually have to decide the colors. And in order to do that, I want a gradient from blue to purple. So I'm going to search for a gradient texture and I'm going to search for a color app. Now let's just control shift click the gradient texture to see what we have. And all right, this is the gradient texture that's going from black to white. So now we can go ahead and place the color of the gradient texture into the color ramp and change the color ramp colors to a nice bluish color over there and a nice purplish pinkish color over here. And now we can go ahead and place this color into the emission and then control shift click the principal BSDF to see what we have. Now we can go ahead and increase the emission strength to something like 10. Although this looks really cool, the top and bottom faces seem to be a little disruptive so we can just tap to go into edit mode go to face select over here and just select the top and the bottom faces and hit X delete faces so now when we actually look at it it looks a lot better however we still have one issue which is that 
in this particular object, you can clearly tell that the base is still square, but we don't necessarily want that to be seen. We want it to be a little more of a circular base. So in order to do that, we're going to add in a spherical gradient. So let's just take this gradient texture, shift D, place it down here, and then duplicate the mapping node from here, shift D and duplicate it and put the object coordinates into the vector and place this vector into the gradient texture so that the gradient texture starts from the center of the object. After that, we can go ahead and search for a mix RGB or a multiply node, which would be a math node. So I'll just search for a math node and take the color ramp output from here and switch it to multiply and place the gradient texture right here. And then we can go ahead and place this value into the alpha. So evidently something is not going on right at the moment. So let's just control shift click our gradient texture. And yeah, we see that it's linear. We forgot to make it spherical. So once we make it spherical, you see the sphere is too small because we have all of the modifiers that's actually stretching it on the top and bottom. So in order to change that, we can just decrease the scale over here and make this to something like 0 0.1 or even zero works as well. So now when we actually control shift click our or principal PSDF, we should see what our final object looks like. And that looks awesome. So now that we have this particular object, we need some sort of background for this to just look a lot better. And we can also change the world properties all the way to black. And we also won't be needing this light at all. So you can actually select it and hit delete, to just remove it. So now let's just shift A, add in the mesh, plane, and then just switch on overlay so that you can see it. Rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees, and then come out of the camera view and just move it behind the object. Once it's behind the object, we can just go ahead and scale it so that it's larger than the object and then go back into our camera view. Now the screen space reflections don't come out too well if it's just a plane and we're looking at it straight on. So in order to change that, we're going to go ahead and since we're using only modifiers, we're going to add in some more modifiers. So let's search for another subdivision surface modifier make it simple and just increase the levels to six and six. Let's just make sure that we scale it up so that it covers our entire camera. And then let's add in another simple deform modifier. Make sure that it's bent and see how it's bending when we change the different angles. So if we go to Z, it should be bending. And now in case it isn't bending like this, just make sure that the origin is set to the actual origin. So we can add in an empty over there. But since our cube is also present at the origin itself, we can go ahead and select our cube as the origin. So now when we go to bend, we can change the axis to the X axis and just change the angle such that it wraps around our object like that. So when we actually look at it through the camera, we should be able to see the reflections come onto our plane. Right now, our plane does not have a material. So let's give it a material. Let's add a new material and just increase the metallic and we can decrease the roughness. In fact, we can just decrease the metallic as well based on your preference. But to give it some character, we're going to search for a Fournoy texture and we're just going to place the color ramp into the roughness. We're also going to search for a bump node place the color into the height and the height into the normal. After that, we just have to change the scale such that everything comes in. We can also select the camera, go to viewport display and just increase passport out and just play around to get the final tweaks as we want. Let's make the scale something like 50. That looks pretty good to me. This bump node will add like a few lines around these areas. As you can see, if you just increase the strength. Now that would look really good only if you have your samples set up to a high number. If you have a low number of samples, it's going to look a lot choppy like it does right now. So that's again, personal preference and how you want it to be. It also gives a few lines to all of these dark regions on top where a little bit of the light actually ends up reflecting. But if it's not there, it's just gonna be plain black. So it's up to you to see what you want and how you enjoy it. But once you're done with that, you can go ahead and just hit render animation. Future me here, a few things that I just did before rendering is added in another simple deform modifier to our plane at the back. And I also added in a new empty at the origin and made sure that the origin for the simple deforms was set to that empty because I realized that that actually makes it symmetrical. And for some reason, it's not symmetrical if we use the cube as the origin. So I added in a secondary simple deform just so that we get some more reflections on top because the top and bottom were looking too empty. Secondly, instead of using the, the color from the Voronoi into the roughness, I now place the distance into the roughness and I'm also getting rid of the bump altogether. Lastly, I will just search for a color wrap so that we have a little bit more control over this for my texture and we can make the dots more prominent using this color ramp if necessary. That's up to you and what your what your own preference is, whether you want the dots to be prominent like this or you don't. 
also the colors i'm just slightly desaturating them so that it's not a complete color and a little bit of whiteness shows through i just personally feel like that looks a little better and the transition also works well with the white so with those changes we'll go back to whatever the original video was hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something really cool from it if you have any questions queries or suggestions comments please write them down below and we will definitely respond and try to create a lot more of these sci-fi abstract tutorials as regularly as we possibly can so until next time stay creative